is it one way or the other way? Okay. Now, if you look at it like you're a dad, and you set forth the challenge, this is how you put your clothes into the washing machine. This is how much soap that goes in. This is what kind of clothes go in because you don't want the colors to run. When it's done, you take the clothes out, put them in the dryer. This is the setting that you put it on because this is what kind of clothes goes in, go, go in the dryer if you actually have different kinds of clothes like that. I like to keep it simple. <laughs> I think, you know, just keep things off my mind and so I can think about the Bible. Things like that. And you'd be surprised how much you can get, actually get out of it um, if you think about it. And the inspiration you can get, the rewards you can get from it. And you're like a dad and you're showing this stuff. This is how you fold your clothes. This is how you put your clothes in the drawer. This is how you hang your clothes up. And that challenge is there. You know, versus uh, the next door neighbor kid that comes over and witnesses you doing that with your children. And that child doesn't have to do that. And, you're, and that child is telling your child, well, my mom does that. I don't have to do that, and you don't have to do that. And, you're, and, and the influences go on to your children that this is what I can do, and this is what I can't do, and you can't make me do it if, you know, on things like this. But you're showing the proper example. But in the obscurity of it all, if you happen to have a parent that has taught you those things, you know, then you know the expectations there. And then there's people that just want to ignore everything, you know, they just want what they want to do. And the same goes with these concepts. But in the end, are you going to be able to ignore them? You're going to remember you've seen it. That's for sure. And so goes the gospel of Christ. You're going to know that you've seen it. The dead know they died. They definitely know they were here. They definitely know they died. I know that in the vision state of things that God will often... Uh, nullify the fact that you're alive, that you've been alive. Um, you're caught in a, in a certain state of mind and uh, kind of suspended. And so people will automatically think that's what happens when you die, but you're going to remember you're going to be the same person dead. You're just not going to be able to have the feelings to change your mind because you're separated from your body. So if you did what was right, you get rejoined with your body. If not, you know, well, the bodies are going to get, are going to disappear anyway. I think God reforms the bodies in a new state. But getting back to the groups, um, you know, Elijah the prophet had a group, but he was driven out by the state. So was Moses, and so were the Christian religion. It was all a matter of state of being.
but it's different for those kingdoms because they had kings and than it is here because like America was founded on the Christian religion and to say that it's separate to have people come in that say it's separate and do the separate things from it as to discredit it that is that goes against the foundations it's building brick on top of stone it's just not gonna last <laughs> stones last a lot longer like the group that Moses was in Moses really had the desire that everybody was going to be like him but uh, God came forth and they all agreed every last one of them because they saw God and they agreed you know, but it went against what they were, a lo what a lot of them wanted out of life. And, uh, you know, so they didn't actually get anything out of it. And then when they didn't get anything out of it and they were put through all that persecution for all those years because they were, they didn't want, they didn't understand what the whole concept of being redeemed from the world and what it all meant. Then they were stuck in a state of uh, disbelief and anger and then pushed God out of the way because they didn't want to deal with it anymore, you know, as a people. So it's kind of hidden in the world now uh, because of all that. Elijah the prophet had the same problem. It was It's all the same problem, just over and over and over. The love isn't there. They're kind of pushing everybody into their lone little area. Here, deal with it and die. And it's not benefiting the people. And... Uh, God is pretty much showing through His Son Jesus Christ that it's that yeah, because it's group based um, and under God that uh, it's not that it can't be done. You know, the Tower of Babel. You know, they built as a nation, but they did it in defiance of God. You know, that ruler did. And then he shot an arrow into the air, you know. And it wasn't because mankind can't be like that. Even though they try to portray it as that. It's that they're not doing it under Christ. If they're united under Christ, then it becomes a whole different matter. And everybody that does it together can actually do something really, really great. But it's uniting under that banner that it's not a banner but Christ and what he wants. And our society could be such a great society if it was just based on that. There are all these separatist laws uh, the creation of states, the creation of nations, uh, is a whole different matter. It's designed for outside of God. It's out, designed outside of Christ. Because when it's in your heart, you're not out there doing things that 
are bad for everybody else. I mean, all that's required is the Ten Commandments, and they're not required for, uh, as law, they're, they're required to be redeemed from the world. I mean, it's because of a passion of love. That is why it's done. It's done out of a matter of sense for family. If you didn't get that, then you don't get anything. Because who do you think Adam and Eve were? I mean, we're all children of Adam and Eve. So it's an interconnected world and because everybody didn't want to agree with it because they couldn't see it or they had other desires in their heart about how they were going to get what they wanted, they're really confused because they don't know that they can have all they want if they just choose to do it that way. They can have actually a lot more. <laughs> and could you imagine a world where somebody that didn't want to do anything with their life, I mean, just didn't want to do anything, and they had a little tiny place to go to, to sleep, where it was safe, and they could have a garden and grow their own food and uh, share in the bounty of the world and not have to do much of anything and then if you wanted to be a great person you could be a great person but it ought to all stem around Christ and you, there, nobody would be taken away from anybody because uh, they felt the world owed them something you know, they would be wanting to do enough to keep themselves alive. And they treated their neighbor decent because they knew that they earned what they had gotten. And it wasn't a matter of uh, money. then our world would be a greatly different place. But uh, because there is a value on everything, you know, you have to draw the line where the minimum value is and the top value is. Um, some people are very rich because of what they know or what they've created and the value that they created in this world. Uh, I don't think God holds it against anybody that they're, they do that, but I think it's in how they decided to earn it. You know, you can't fool everybody. <laughs> and if you do fool everybody, then, uh, then you created a false value. There has to be a real value there, not just a false value, where people are going to look at what you're doing and go, well, I want to duplicate that. And uh, it turns out to be something that uh, isn't going to work for you. So these things you look at and you decide which way is right. One eye, one vision on the world. And well, I kind of said everything I was going to say. You know, you get you get Moses' group and they're going to head to the promised land and uh, they get to a certain point where they all sin because they didn't follow what God wanted to follow they followed the influence 
again, they got caught up in something they shouldn't have gotten caught up into, and that's where God gets angry. But I think if they would have repented, um, God would have forgave them. But I think that they didn't really repent. and uh, The whole purpose of being alive is to redeem yourself. It is to get a body, you know, for the resurrection. And everybody's going to be resurrected, regardless of whether they want to be or not. So, you know, it's just what's going to happen after that. And uh, so, God decides that they, they're not going to go to the promised land, they're going to get their original land, and uh, they... Uh, have to evict all these people that moved in. Whether there was that many people to begin with, I don't know if they were all the sons of Abraham or not. Uh, could have been generations upon generations upon generations. And uh, depending on who joined the group, uh, not sure how the Egyptians did all that, but they didn't want that, you know, kind of concepts and um, treated, started treating people bad because I think they were outnumbered. And that's the way it tends to work out in life is if you're overruled uh, by the threat of power, that power is going to treat you really, really terrible. And I know from experience in life that when that power treats you very, very terrible, it's because they're afraid of your power that you have. Because if you united that power, then uh, I wouldn't say it was a power, but they view it as a power and a threat. And so then you get grief, strife, and envy from that. So they got to try to come in and force it out because they don't want that. That's the greed of power. And if they try to take part of that power, they're not going to represent it truly because they don't want uh, God in it. So they have to fight to get their, what they believe is the promised land back, and God never said that. He, he wanted to take them, but because of the sin that was there, that he couldn't take them to the promised land. So they ended up getting their original land back, was, which was rocks, stubble, you know, the whole land had been trampled on. That's kind of what happened. In, Ethiopia, as example, was they just uprooted everything and then it caused a drought because uh, the vegetation didn't hold moisture in it anymore. So you get a lot of these videos on permaculture and how to restart the land and all this and that and the other thing. So they figured out how to reverse engineer that trampling down effect. And, uh, that's probably what happened in the uh, Israel area, the, all that area, was there just populations have been there for so long that they trampled the land down without care, without reservation. So being barren uh, 
they pretty much buried themselves, abandoned themselves out of the concepts of God and uh, not one of them, not even Moses, got to enter in to that land that God was, that God had led them to. Uh, they were subject to grief and strife and all that because God isn't one that would treat an honest individual like that. Uh, God may allow the test of the devil if there's anything there that would cause that. But if you don't abide by the devil, then that isn't going to take place for you. It's only evil brings evil. Eh, I don't know if I can even say that. So if you allow evil, evil will run over the top of you can't allow evil there. I think that's the more correct version of it, is when you allow evil in, evil will take over. And I think that's the problem that uh, the Israelites had, was they allowed evil to come in and influence them. And the only way God could wean it out was to allow the devil to take its course, his course, with it. because the devil will lead to uh, destruction always. See, and people don't see these points when they're reading the Bible. And you really need to take consideration of the strong points in the Bible and have somebody that knows what they're talking about pinpoint out these things for you to read and to see. And then your Bible studies go a lot smoother because you're actually being taught. And what a lot of preachers and teachers and pastors and reverence will teach is more the fiery brimstone thing. Follow me. And, you know, you get the whole uh, poltergeist theme going on with evil and uh, the intent. And... I'm kind of over-exaggerating, but you need to see the scenario that this is where you're going with it. So the only cure for religion is to read the Bible, to glean out of it the truth that you need to surpass the untruth. I'm not saying that people are evil. I'm saying they're their natures are confused and they don't know what to do. That there are a lot of really good people out there, a lot of really good families out there. People that have good intentions, people that want to make the world better. But you also have evil people out there that want to just rule everything and take over. You know, so there's a there's a difference there and you know where the good people I think they really outweigh the bad ones the bad ones know the truth don't want you to see it so you get a confused group that eventually finds God again. They rebuild the temple. They build the temple the way God does, wants it. 
as soon as it falls away from God again, it gets destroyed. And then it gets rebuilt through the state of the empire, the existing empire at, of the last age, and uh, then gets destroyed when they leave God again. They never recovered and they never rebuilt the temple. And God can't let everybody die off. His promise is to try to save everybody, as many people as he can. <laughs> but he really left it up to us whether we want to be saved or not. Because that's what a dad does. gonna get that allowance as a child you have to clean your room you got to make your bed you come down and you eat breakfast you make sure you get dressed and you do this and this in a certain way and you'll get a reward if the child comes in and goes hey you know I, I need a new bike then dad might say well okay you got to meet me halfway on that So you come up with half the money, and Dad comes up with the other half because you're meeting you halfway on it. It's not just a total uh, giveaway thing. You don't just love your children to allow those things in, the bad things. Because if they think they're going to get everything for free, uh, nothing's ever free. But there is benefit from doing the right things. There's reward from that. And uh, so when you think about the family and everything, and you get into God, and God is about the family, and this is Elijah coming in and telling you how to be so that you and your family can be redeemed from the world. And if we come here to create a family, it's also possible to take that family with you. Because it's part of God's concept of marriage to become one. Okay, for those who go, well, this isn't in the Bible, or does it say it's in the Bible? Well, you're the ones that are doing the laws. If it's not in the Bible, it doesn't exist. You're the ones being lied to. You're the ones lying to yourself about it. Because how is that possible that two become one and you're going to be like the angels in heaven? Single, not married. If it's God's will that that be, then it is also God's will that that can be there. Because God doesn't distinguish this, the realms from each other. But if we're created in that realm to be born to have a body for the resurrection after life, then it is also conceivable that this is about the family and not the individual. Because if the male is the head priest of the family, as he created Adam to be, then it's also part of the resurrection process. Now you can say, well, that's not in the Bible. I just made the argument. How are you going to get around that? If God doesn't distinguish the difference between heaven and earth, and it's by what we do, then only if, 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 okay, 
If you're saying that we're going to be resurrected and there's going to be a resurrection and one's going to be taken and the other one's not, then it is the concept of that person didn't do the right thing. But what if it's both of them are doing the right thing? They get